What's up guys? This is Kairu back in my Rome 2 Total War DEI campaign going through how to build a civilization. I know it's been a long time. Apologize for that. I've been busy playing a lot of other games actually and I'm uh, gonna do another upload very soon of uh, me playing some Mountain Blade. Um, I found a very good mod for that that I'd like to play around with as well. Um, in the meantime, we're back here. We just conquered the uh, copper location, which allows me to produce... I'm going to upgrade it to give me probably better weapons, because I think my troops are more offensive. My best troops are more offensive anyway, rather than defensive. So I think I'm going to go for really good weapons. Maybe I'll go for good armor. If Is there another iron or steel? Ooh, there is iron right over there. Okay. I'm going to definitely take that. So I can have a really good armor producing place and a really good weapon producing place. That's going to be really, really convenient to have both of those. Um, in the meantime, I know that I'm at war with these guys over here, which is, it's a good idea to take that territory because it helps expand our influence in this province. But I think I've got to let my troops replenish. They've taken some damage and they, I don't remember how much power they've got, and I don't have any agents yet, or at least, yeah, I don't have any agents, and I don't have enough money right now to recruit any, so I'm going to leave them be for at least another turn or two, continue building up my infrastructure, because that's what this is all about, is I'm showing you guys how a civilization is developed from less organized, uh, disunified places, and I'm not to say that one is better than the other, I'm just saying this is how it happens. Um, could be very easily argued that a lot of, like, less quote-unquote civilized or less, uh, let's say agricultural and urban, um, settle, uh, modes of human existence are arguably much more free because they don't have nearly as much government oversight. I'm not saying one way is better than the other. They often also are much more, well uh, you, egalitarian, so we have far fewer hierarchies the within their, uh, the like, population of people with varying levels of wealth. It tends to more be like everybody has roughly enough to do okay. Um, and far fewer have, like, stupid amounts, and there's fewer who are, like, starving regularly and don't have enough to live. So, you know, it, it depends. Um, you don't get the huge population surpluses unless you got uh, serious agriculture going, though. That's just the way it works. Um, so, the Volke want a non-aggression pact. Actually, that doesn't sound like a bad idea, because I really want to unify the Iberian Peninsula before I start worrying about going there. And if I can have the Volke, the Volke and the Viviski as kind of a bulwark against the Arverni, that'd be very useful, especially since I'm at war with the Arverni and they could show up with an absolutely massive army out of nowhere attacking my one general who's defending this territory. I've also got my alliance with the Sesatani. I might have to break that eventually to unify the whole territory, the whole of Iberia, um, but we'll see. I might not. I might try and make them, like, a client state, rather than outright conquer them. We'll see. But I'll take this non-aggression back. Alright, uh, yeah, I'll go for shield maker here since I know I can get the blacksmith over here eventually, but I think I'm going to take these guys out first and see how, what my troops are at. And uh, this unit's still pretty weak, and I don't have enough money to build all of their equipment to be better. Probably shouldn't bother doing that now anyway, because I'm probably going to replace most of this army as soon as I can recruit better units, just because these guys are pretty crummy. Let's push up to the border, at least. Do we have enough to fortify? We do, so let's fortify on the border. We'll continue to retrain, and let's upgrade a handful of their equipment. I'm not going to bother with all my light troops because it's a percentage increase of armor, and so if they've got very little armor to begin with, it doesn't actually help all that much. So, yeah. And I'm hoping that nothing just bum rushes that province because I really want it to continue to get better, improve public order, get more. Wealth coming the people out of, of it. Carthage love trade. Mm. We would share our love with you. See, 
That's the thing, Carthage, is you hold territory I want. Now, it's true, trade is always a good idea, but I'm probably going to... Well, I'm not going to betray them too quick, because I'm probably going to take out these two smaller factions, these three smaller factions, actually, and uh, unify up this whole area before I go after Carthage, Carthaginian territory. So yeah, I'll take the trade agreement. Um, because the fact just remains that different territories, different areas, have an easier time getting different resources. Um, it's not to say that, like, they have olives in that territory. I could probably grow some olive trees. It's possible that humans could grow olive trees where I'm at. But for them, it's much easier, and so there's a surplus of that good, allowing it to be sold at a cheaper rate than you would get other places, which necessitates it being transported around in order to get the maximum value out of it. So trade develops. People have an easier time getting lumber in their territory, and so they, you know chop down trees, and they use some of them, obviously, but then they've probably got a surplus, and that surplus is more valuable as, you know, an exchange into something else than it is as what they've already got a ton of, which is wood. So you trade it for olives, you trade it for silver, you trade it for craft goods, you trade it for whatever, and you, and that helps both areas develop and have an easier time getting bigger populations, organizing, becoming more you know, having more of the trappings of what we would traditionally call, you know, quote-unquote civilization. Um, could build a meeting ground. I'm going to want to produce warriors here. Um, Astati Scutarii. That sounds pretty cool. And different kinds of archers as well. Ah, uh, it's not going to have the right thing because of the mod. Um... I do also want horse pens eventually. I'll wait. I don't need to produce that yet. Over here, I might as well work on my economy. Now, I'm thinking that I'm probably going to want a harbor somewhere. But I'm really not going to be using my navy. My navy is going to be crummy no matter what, probably. This I definitely want to upgrade, though, because that's just extra food, extra public order. Is it any extra public order? Well, it's extra food and it's extra trade goods, i.e. surplus fish to sell to other places. Um more army recruitment, more fleet recruitment, and it's got a bigger garrison. Like, that's just a, a no-brainer to go for. So I'm... hold up here. It's technically winter, but we're so far south that I don't think that's really going to be a problem. Can't go terribly far into their territory. I'm not replenishing anymore, so I might as well go into their territory, though. And that might provoke them into attacking me in a way that would be advantageous to me. I could get a couple... I get maybe one of these. I would chew up my income pretty bad though, so I'm just going to deal with not having any cap. Normally I love cavalry. You'll you'll see this about me, and I know that the Iberians get access to some nice uh, skirmisher cavalry and like heavy melee cavalry, I think. Um, so you'll see over the course of this Let's Play, hopefully soon, um, I'll be able to show you good cavalry tactics, especially in the ancient world when, where like, I think this game does a pretty good job of it, but like, most cavalry in the ancient world wasn't really like heavy cavalry, though there was heavy cavalry. Like, a lot of historians seem to think that like the stirrup and the advent of the Western Knight really was the, the heralding of heavy cavalry tactics into the world, and that's just not true. There were heavy cavalry in the Middle East, cataphracts, there were heavy cavalry in China, there were heavy chariots all over the place. Um, it's just that in Europe, cavalry didn't get heavy until the advent of the stirrup, really. Um, but yeah, uh, trade with them is no longer applicable. In Europe, a lot of places, cavalry was more for harassing, throwing javelins, or for getting your best, most elite troops to a sp certain spot on the battle, and then they would dismount and fight on foot. Um, Germans did that a lot. Celts did that a lot. I'm not... I know that the Iberians were famous for having very good horses and good horsemen, but I think they were more uh, skirmishing um, and occasionally, like, mixing it up in melee. But, like, it wasn't the same as, like, a heavy cataphract charge or something like that. All right, nothing is coming out against me yet. I think, ah, that's why. Their armies, ooh, that's actually kind of useful. Their armies went up and took out my ally. Now, I know that sounds cruel for me to say that that's kind of useful, but it means that I can unify this territory without having betrayed anybody, which is good. Um, that would lower my public order. What's my public order like in this province? It's not great. So I'm going to not upgrade the cattle pens there yet. Meeting ground, yeah, I mean, I could do that. Let's take this territory, though. Come on. 
And it's gonna... The auto-resolve would give it to me, but I'm sure that the auto-resolve would take more casualties than I'm gonna be able to get out of them. They're probably gonna sally forth. Well, I've got the numbers advantage. They'll probably hole up in their city. But we'll see. They've got a bunch of crummy units. I'm sure those local swordsmen aren't bad, but the townsfolk and the garrison spearmen are all gonna be crummy. Um, they've got a general and two ships. I can win this, and I think I can do it with a pretty low amount of casualties just because I've got decent holding troops and then very, very good flanking troops. At least for this early in the game. I know I'm going to be able to get much better flanking and holding troops. I'm hoping to get some really cool, like, javelin throwing units. Because I know that uh, Iberian Warfare for a long time was about throwing javelins. Kind of similar in that regard to uh, Celtic Warfare, like Irish Warfare. Kerns were a type of Irish soldier that um, would essentially have either darts or javelins or maybe a bow or a sling. But they were essentially skirmisher troops that would pepper the enemy with whatever they had and then, you know, mass up and charge really intensely. And they weren't known as being, like, you know, the best troops, but they, like, it was effective and it was difficult to deal with because if they want to run away, you can't really catch them unless you've got more horsemen than they do. Um, dry. Yeah. So, yeah, all of my people have some sort of javelin. That's cool. I like that. I've all got them on fire at will. Um, so I know that they're going to get ships, so I do want to have something around to try and pick off whatever comes off of their ship. So I think I'll use my slingers for that, supported by my general and these axes. And then I'm going to use the swords. Yeah. The swords and the spears I'm going to have push this flank. And essentially I'm going to try and force the computer to pay attention to one way or the other, and then when they're paying attention to, say, over here, I'll hit with over there. If they switch their position and try and pay attention to me over here, I might back off and go in more intensely with the other side, just so that I'm forcing them to fight on two fronts and to disperse their power. Alright. Move my guys up a little bit. Make sure that I've got shots on them when they get off their boats. Yeah, Iberian local slingers. I'm looking forward to also getting some very good slingers. Uh, uh, Balearic slingers are known to have been very, very proficient slingers. They were hired by the Romans, and the Romans wrote about them being very skilled mercenaries for their armies. Alright, you guys can just kind of push up. Yeah. These guys are going to be pretty weak spear infantry. They don't have hardly any armor. They've got a shield, and the shield makes a big difference, but very little armor. And, uh, not, you know, only some of them have helmets. So they're all, they're pretty weak to getting hit by missiles. And they also just don't have very good melee attack or melee defense. They'll hold for a while if, if they get charged, but, like, I would not expect them to win against those local swords. What I would expect them to do is perhaps to be able to essentially mast javelin fire take them out and then hold against their you know broken up charge that they would be able to do back. Alright. Let's shift over just so that if they charge out at me I'll get more of them into the arc of my slinger fire. I told you about in a previous episode how slings are actually surprisingly effective. Um, you know, you wouldn't think, you'd think like, oh, it's just a sling, it's just throwing a rock. But no, they're pretty effective, and I mentioned that before. In fact, I think I lost one of my generals to a sling stone um, as he was charging in. I was like, yep, you know, it happens. Essentially, the story of David and Goliath is kind of a microcosm of probably how the Jews viewed their wars against uh, Phoenician peoples. Because um, Goliath essentially was it, is described to represent like a, he, a Phoenician heavily armored warrior, and David is is kind of designed to look like a light Jewish you know guerrilla war warrior, um, and their how their fight went is kind of a microcosm of probably how their 
wars went was the Jews used more uh, asymmetrical warfare, skirmished more, um, you know, dispersed into the hills when confronted by the heavy formations and then ambushed and when they wanted to get into melee didn't, you know, charge toe to toe, they would surround them and stuff like that. Um, and so, yeah, I like the story of David and Goliath. I like a lot of the Old Testament. I'm not a religious person myself, but I like a lot of the Old Testament because it reads a lot like history, and as you all know, I love history. Are my guys, like, in the water? They're not going to drown, are they? No, they're just up to their knees. So now I'm going to start wailing on these guys. They're already losing people. This ship head is going to protect a certain number of them, but not, not enough that they'll win a fight against this many of my slingers. Yeah, I'm probably taking a little bit of hit point damage to my men. But we'll see. We'll see how this goes. I'm gonna push a little bit over here. Not that I want to really start the fight yet, but I want to get into range where my guys can maybe throw their javelins at these two units. If I can completely take these two units out of the field with javelin tosses, I think that'd be a good use of my ammo. Because then I have open access to getting in here, maybe sending my swords to flank around over this way. That'll be good. Yeah, so one of them is gone. The other one's already down to three-quarters strength. peppered him down. Alright, uh, so now I'm going to take my slingers and set them over here. I think they'll be able to get shots kind of over those houses and into those guys. And I will move my heavy melee infantry in behind them. What are these guys armed with? I'm in general, these guys' axes, yeah. They're like heavy axe men. These are my, my uh, slingers. And heavy axes. Some of them have swords. Most of them have big ol' axes. Big shields, okay armor, not great. Certainly no legionnaires, these, but decent armor. Orders, my lord! Why aren't you throwing back? Oh, these are not Jones. Okay. You three, push up. Get into range two, throw your Jones. Taking Slinger Fire, which is bad because you're pretty weak to it, but you can all start pitching javelins back. Throw. Throw, guys. Alright, I'm gonna pull them out to this fight. Now. I'll take some slinger damage, but I honestly really don't care much about those troops. They are not the killers of my army, so that's engaged. Peppering them over here. That's a better matchup. I'm taking out their swords with my slings, and I'm taking out their spears with my swords. So, I'm trying to get you guys some close ups of the brutal action here. Yeah, some of their men have broken. I've got my spears coming in one side and my swords in the other. Swords and axes, I guess. Some falcatas. Told you guys about falcatas in the last episode, I think. cycled out a different sort of unit. And this is something that the AI does once you start peppering one unit. They'll pull them back so that you don't do too much damage to it and bring up another. 
And it's more effective to focus all your fire on the same unit for a longer time, generally, but if this is what they're going to do, I'm still going to take the the HP damage, the, the just wearing down of their units, because if they take some fire, even if they don't take too many casualties, it'll make them easier to, for my, uh, my axes and my infantry to fight in melee. Essentially, like... And every sling, you know, every slingstone might not kill you, but getting hit by a slingstone is not going to leave you in the exact same fighting shape as not getting by a slingstone. I mean, you might survive, but that doesn't mean you're going to be able to duke it out in melee for quite as long. You know, you might have a giant bruise on your shoulder. You might have a, you know, really bad concussion. You might have a small hunk of lead embedded in your body somewhere and you just haven't gone down from it. Like, you might still be up, but you're going to be less effective. Spear on spear fights. Now one thing that I really hope that Rome Total War learns to get better is making it less look less like it's a bunch of individual fights happening and making it look more like it's people working together to fight an enemy. Because, like, this looks cool. From a distance, it's like, oh yeah, big unit fight. But each individual animation is essentially like a 1v1. What it should be is that guy's, you know, he's rushing in trying to hit that guy. Why the heck isn't that guy right next to him stabbing him? Like, that should be something that is animated. If I were to give any advice to Creative Assembly, that's something that should happen. Because that would totally happen in war. In fact, there are uh, treatises from the Middle Ages, you know, could argue that oh, it would be different in the ancient time because we don't have evidence to say it is. But in the Middle Ages, there are treatises that show tactics, especially of like groups of spears or pole weapon users, halberds, you know, glaives, that sort of thing, um, using team tactics where one guy is engaging somebody and the other guy shoots in from his side and stabs him through, the, you know, the body or cuts his leg or whatever. My slingers are continuing to get good damage output. Not a ton of kills, but again, they're doing that HP damage. Armed Townsfolk. I'm going to get a lot of kills on the Armed Townsfolk, but I could do that with melee, so I'd rather use my ammo to hurt units that I won't have as much success with in melee. Now, this is their general, so he's going to tank out quite a lot of kills, I'm sure. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take those guys who got damaged earlier... I'm going to try and sneak them around the side, either to pitch their javelins or to at least run in and tie down these two units, and maybe bring this front over, and then I can do the final rush with my general and his tough axe men. And this is just, you know, this is part of making a, a civilization. If you want unity and you want cohesion in a society, you know, dedicated towards building great monuments or huge public works projects, you gotta unify some territory, like, that's just the way it goes. It doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do, you know, who's to say whether it was better for humans to stay the way they were or to, you know, use bad tactics and, you know, let's just say, it, call it evil warfare against one another in order to unify. You know, penicillin is cool, but in order to have penicillin you gotta have, you know, sta stability for thousands of years. Not to say that war makes things stable either, but that's the argument used by militarists. I personally am a pacifist, I just really like strategy games. <laughs> just reform my lines so my slingers are firing a little bit more effectively. Alright, you need to go over here maybe. You're not getting the angle that you need apparently. Alright, this guy's posed. Come on, guys. Sneak through. Everybody mm. hosed to the bottom. Yeah, that general is tanking some serious kills. Come on, get through. Alright, fine. Come on, get through, get around, and start throwing your stinking javelins at them. We await your orders. Charge! Orders, my lord. What are your orders? Spears ready! Alright. 
done a lot of damage to this side of the army. I think it's time. Alright, General, you guys go through that side. You two actually come this way. Yeah, this side's gonna break, I'm just gonna pull them out. No need to let them take any more casualties than they have. Most of my units are gonna be able to replenish from this, which is what I need. Slingers, it's back off. You two go after that. You, you, go on the side. Yeah, my units just really cannot take the, the skirmish fire. Neither can theirs. You know, we're all using pretty light units. Go over there. Yeah, you're out. I'm gonna let you run away. You do. We await your Alright, so general, you go take on their weakened general. Axes, you're gonna sneak in. Special unit ability? No. Alright, let's actually let their general get stuck in there. We are at your command. Even with their general coming in, they're trying to break. What are your orders? Melee infantry! And use the back! Orders by all! You start pushing them off of us so that we're not getting our gun off of the back. Ah, uh, they've broken. My general is going to slaughter them now. Try and run away. And that's another thing is that in most ancient battles, the majority of men killed are not killed in direct combat. Humans are actually generally pretty good at just you know protecting themselves and not getting killed in direct combat. It takes a while. If you've ever uh, LARPed or done in any martial art really, or done Hema or anything or Kendo or anything like that, you'll notice that like. Humans learn fairly quickly the ins and outs of not getting hit. It gets pretty hard to hit humans as they learn that sort of thing. Um, but what happens is when the morale of the army breaks, then the cohesion is lost and you get situations where it's very easy to single out people and have them face off against odds that they really can't do, all while either you know they're running away, they're freaked out, they've seen their friends die, they, you know, maybe have dropped their shield or their weapon, and then suddenly they're, you know, before they can get far enough away, they're come upon by enemies and, you know, they get slaughtered. You know, it's the route that ends up killing the most people. It's people running away from the fight who end up actually dying the most. And the sick logic of it is that the people who run away first actually are probably going to get away. It's the people who are a little braver and then run away that actually generally get killed. In ancient warfare, at least. I don't know how it works in modern warfare. I don't, you know, study that nearly as much. Come on, these loading screens. Yeah, my general tanking out 133 kills, almost nobody lost. These guys, like, no kills, all that damage done to it. Two kills, all that damage done to it. Um, my slinger's doing pretty well. Like, they, the, them, the axes, and the general are really the killing part portions of my army. And as soon as I can replace the rest of these troops, I will. Because really, they just aren't, aren't up to snuff. You know, and in this game, you end up facing just hordes and hordes of computers. Jeez, did the newest updates just absolutely screw up the loading times? It's taking forever. There we go.
Thank you for loading up, game. Their general did amazingly before going down. He chopped his way right through my spears. But, I mean, you know, they really just couldn't stand up to him. If I was really good at this game, I would have engineered the situation that their general would have gotten into my spears. But, honestly, I was just kind of using them for what they were good for, which is tying down units. Um, yeah. I'm going to occupy. I'm not going to sack stuff, generally, um, just because... The money is nice, but other than that, you don't. It's not helpful. All right, so I've got two of these. So that means that I can do horses and infantry here. I'll just do horses in another province because I want to get different bonuses for my horses. Um, ours has olives. Awesome. More extra food surplus. That is certainly good. I'll get rid of that. Um. They still have Tarako, and they've got a decent army. It's not a great army, but it's not a terrible army either. Can I recruit anything good into this army? I could get some Cav. It'd be bad for my income, though, and really my income isn't that great at the moment anyway. Can I general that? Uh, I gave him Ferocious Warrior and Capable Bureaucrat. I probably want to give his army some more bonuses. So yeah, let's do... Trained Swordsman, get that maxed out so I get the charge bonus and melee attack and melee defense for all my soldiers. He likes to scrap and he's a shield biter, so Eesh, he likes to fight and kill people. Well, you need that kind of guy to lead your army sometimes, sad though it may be. Um, yes, yeah, so I need to go take Tarako. I could... Send this guy over with a few units. Recruit them on the way, sort of thing. Ooh, these guys are not bad. They're, a hun they're 50 less men. They've got more charge bonus, though. Let's try getting them to the army. So you two... And then a couple slingers. Just that it's at least a little balanced. I really don't want that army coming in, but if they do, I can move over before they get there. Ugh, Nemesos. Under siege. I hope that they win. Or no, they're not under siege. Their armies are all fortified, and then there's the Arverni. So yeah, I might have to run back to my town and defend it against that big Arverni stack. That's 19 units. I've got 12 here. There's how many of them are armed towns? So only two. So I can probably hold out against that army if I have to run back. Hopefully I won't. I'd like to be able to reinforce my army that's attacking Tarako. The people of Carthage are true Carthage friends wants a non aggression and pact. I'll take it. No, I'm not going to pay you for it. Come back when you're not trying to get money out of me. I wonder what Egypt's up to. Sometimes Egypt ends up becoming a very, very significant player in the game. Yeah, I'm going to have to run back to my settlement. Maybe even recruit some mercenaries. We have fine goods, and you doubtless have much that we would find. I would desirable. love trade. So, I'm gonna are we to have trade? Move, you're gonna pay me? I, that's hard to argue against. I'm gonna have to betray you eventually, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'll take trade now. Got to unify up Iberia in order to. Make the rest of the world bow before our greatness. Especially since they've got the iron smith. Alright. So yeah, I'm gonna have to rush back. Whoa, no. Alright, I guess that's fine to do. I'm putting myself open for that army to take, and either they're gonna take me on or they're not. If they aren't, then I'll probably have to go back and retrain for a turn. But for now, this army, this is the one that I was actually trying to send over here. So 
That is going to be a temple. I definitely need a temple. Actually, no, I need a freaking farm. I do not have very much food. Um, and this is an agriculture province, so yeah, farm. Build a temple when I get some extra territory to add to this. And again, any good mercy? Ooh. Berserkers, you say? Berserkers sound fun. They have no armor. I get, I'll get one Berserker. That'll be an interesting unit to show you guys. I think they're a two-handed axe unit. Anybody else want trade? Celtica. I welcome you, worthy speaker. Alright. Too bad for you. I will be a patient audience. Saisley. Heck yes, I would love to trade. You present you. You honest terms that well, I accept. I got several resources. Might even have... You might, I'd guess they'd have salt, probably. I know North Africa is known for having salt. Maybe not that part of North Africa. I'm, I apologize for not knowing more specifically uh, where salt is produced in North Africa. Other than that, I know it is. All right, Arverni. Let's see what you can do. I'm hoping I can... Yeah, they backed off, that's what I thought. I'm just gonna have to leave that army there. Peace tree. My people wish to offer you this gift. Noop, Aravachi, noop. Ah, but their navy is attacking me. Ooh, I've got a pretty crummy garrison army, but they've got a pretty crummy navy. Let's try it. I've got as many men as them. Try it. If I can single out their general and kill him with some of my spears, just mob them all onto the general. I can probably pull this off. They're not going to be on their horses, though. Thing. Which might be an advantage to them. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to give it a try. If I lose this territory and have to retake it, that's not a huge deal. I just misclicked and I should have left my army back in this territory. I wonder... I don't have a ram on these ships, but I'm wondering if it would be wise to use my boats to attempt to sink them, just because they don't have many skirmishers, so I could probably get a ram or two in. And if I can sink them, then that entire unit's gone. And this is only 11 slingers each, like, that's not going to be significant on the battlefield anyway. Slings kind of require a big hail of sling stones to be effective. All right, I'm going to try and send both of them at that corner. Uh, no, they can't. In that case, in that case, I'm just going to delay them and hopefully break their fleet up. Yeah, these ships cannot ram. Very unfortunate, but honestly realistic. Like, it would not do much. That's 50 men. If I can get them hurt, that's good. 76, I don't like that. 81. 23, I can easily beat. 21. 61, but they're slingers, so if I can catch them in a melee with my swords, they'll go down quick. Aw, oh, man. Balearic's... Balearic. Balearic? Balearic? Bailerick. I don't know. Bailerick Slingers. Ugh. Do not want to tangle with them. Now, what I could also do is stay on triple speed this whole time and just run their navy around. Only 22 men throwing sling stones just is not going to do a lot. And these units are all pretty small and weak, so they're probably not going to do a lot. I'm honestly probably going to lose this battle, but I'll see what I can do. Alright, well, if they're going to chase my boats, I'm going to lead them on a merry chase. Maybe stop every once in a while so that they get into range of my slings and don't get discouraged. Give my oarsmen a rest.
not going to do much damage, but hey. The more I delay them, the more I spread them out, the better. No, this is probably very boring. I might honestly cut out doing this in editing just because I understand it's probably very boring to see me run around the fleet. I'm not going to run them around. I'm going to land my boats. Land my boats, force them to land, fight this, because honestly you guys do deserve better than me cheesing the computer for 20 minutes on triple speed. I really don't think I have much of a chance in this battle. If all of my guys manage to throw all of their javelins at all good targets, maybe, just maybe, we can win this, but I really doubt it. I can manage to get my local swordsmen into flank charges, that'll be good too, be useful. line of slingers. Let's see what the AI does. Got that skip, I got uh, called on Skype and I must have forgotten to pause, um, but I'm back. Alright, so it looks like they're going over here. Alright, um, spears, move back to the town center. Honestly, like, I might try and exploit the fact that the AI likes to go for the town centers. That might be my best option, is draw them in and then just pepper them while they sit the town center. Make that a group, soft group. Pepper them as they get off their ships, run in, let my guys throw all their javelins, then run off of the town center and flank charge them. Hello, Odin. Odin is my new cat. Hello. He likes to meow at me and make me pet him while I play games. He is a goofy cat, but he is awesome. He has a bunch of fur on one of his eye that m eyes that makes it look like an eye patch. That's why we named him Odin. Odin the all goofer, the all goober, the all fuzzy. All right. So it looks like they've sent their first couple units off. I'm gonna slam down. I mean, it's a very small, relatively weak cavalry unit. guys. Run. Go faster. Come on, guys. There should be enough of you to get, like, a few kills on a 23-man strong unit. Yeah, there's a morale bonus for holding that, but I mean, honestly, 
there's a bigger morale bonus with not dying and not getting involved in melee and skirmishing these guys out with all my missile weapons is my best bet. Yes, Odin, I know you need pets all the time. I'm actually getting some kills now. Middle one, keep moving. Flying two, keep shooting. off to. I'm going to just skirmish away with all of you. If I can draw these two units out and, and with enough slinger fire I might be able to break them. Alright, you guys both back off. So that's two units that I could potentially take out of the, the combat with slinger. I mean, they're not great units, but it's less that I have to fight with my infantry at least. These guys are really what scare me. Because they are much larger units. Coming in. Silly Odin. Just chill, buddy. I'll be done recording soon. javelins in the back. Hopefully they will stop on the thing and give my guys time to get some javelin throws in. All of my guys added together should be enough to at least hold it and I can take the armed townsfolk and try and get a flanking advantage. Swords and maybe also get a flanking advantage. So I don't trust my guys to throw their javelins. We are at your command! What are your orders? Alright, now if I can win this fight quickly, I can run and take out their guys. Actually, I'm going to sacrifice these two units just to push them and keep them from firing by keeping them running away. looking too terrible. I was surprisingly effective with my melee. I was expecting them to do terribly.
ass out in. Uh, stop. Run. Run, General. I cannot let you die. All my morale will go to... Go to crap if you die. Run, run, run. they're shooting they're probably getting more hits of their own guys in the back and they're getting mine you keep pushing everybody yes all right even if they manage to catch my uh guys out here i've won this because i can easily beat the rest of their men in melee i must have just been too tired no she's that fresh how the can you get caught My guys can't decide who they fight for. Is it Gaul or Carthage? Because both of them are actually wrong. <laughs> Alright! I was totally expecting to lose this. I'm one with pretty low casualties, to be honest. Yep, there we go. Heroic victory! I wonder if one of these people will be adoptable or something. I know that, that was a thing in Shogun. I can't remember if it was in Rome. I haven't played this in quite a, lot, a while. I've been on, like I said, a very long uh, mountain blade kick. But yeah, so adding or defending a territory from being quickly retaken by the Aravachi, who wanted peace with me and then attacked. Traitorous. I say. Now only 82 losses, 389 kills. Pretty good. Oh man, these load screens. Well, I think it's been almost an hour, so I'm actually going to call it there, and I will stop recording. Um, you guys got a couple of nice successful battles out of this and uh, hopefully I talked a little bit more about trade I talked a little bit about uh, the differences between more nomadic and less uh, urban cultures in comparison to uh, agriculture based and hierarchical urban cultures um, yeah there's nobody nobody's rich in a society if there isn't a surplus to be had by one person so that's part of the nature of uh, agricultural and urban societies is that that's what happens you get a surplus of food and somebody manages to get most of it into their hands and they end up being rich and they trot on the poor um you know doesn't mean that the overall effect is necessarily better or worse but that's just what happens in societies is that as they become more agriculture and have agricultural and have bigger food surpluses and more specializ specialization of labor they also become more uh, hierarchical there's more social class distinction um, but yeah, I'm going to call that quits there. This has been Karyu. See you later.